Good evening. I'm Diane Grant from the Charleston Chamber of Commerce. And um, I wanted to thank our sponsors, Chad, Charleston Against Drugs, and the Zelma Lacey House for their sponsorship of this program. Without it, we couldn't, we couldn't do it. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of events tonight and things like that because we kind of have a lot to cover. So I wanted to get right to it and introduce our very special guest tonight. Um, he took out time from his busy tax practice. It is tax season. And to come over and his, uh, his passion, like mine, is for small businesses. And he specializes in small business. So I want to introduce David Lynch from David M. Lynch, Inc. of Weymouth, Massachusetts. Good evening, Dave. Good evening. How are you tonight? You know, I had a Charlestown Association years ago. I used to work for U.S. Gypsum back oh, around yeah, 1965, That's 66. a long time ago. That, yes. uh, yeah, that's a long time. So, I, you know, I know that you specialize in small businesses. And just for a little bit of disclosure here, you've been my accountant for 21 years. It seems like eternity. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> Very good accounting, by the way. T totally kept me out of jail and everything. Yes, so that's yes, awesome. Yes. So far. Yeah. I don't see anybody in the room yet. <laughs> There's a couple of IRS agents yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah, They're know, waiting we, for us right we know, now. We know them all. Believe so, me. really, what does somebody? What do you do when you're starting a small business? Because this is something that we have to identify. Um, I know, as a graphic and web designer, that we want to get into the business with the marketing and, and the logo design. But I think that one of the most important things that I did when I started a small business was that I could find somebody who understood what the needs for my business were, right. and when should you consider you know, getting an accountant? Well, uh, as you said, I specialize in small businesses for over 30 years. We set up 75 offices from here to Honolulu, specializing in small businesses. Mm. The problem is the accounting community has a tough time with small businesses because they have a limited budget as far as trying to what, what they've got to get done. Right. But if, I ha if I'm answering your question, the ideal time for a person who's getting into business, whether they're starting a business or buying a business, is before they do it. Because I can, I can run analysis and find out what the break-even points are. I can help structure the deal in terms of buying it. I can even analyze for them whether or not they should buy it. Right. Sometimes it's kind of like you come in after the horse is out of the barn. You see that, that a lot. Right. Decisions have been made that, you know. And it's heartbreaking because these people put their lifeblood into mm -hmm. a business and they're opened up and they've got the challenges right off the bat because they don't have a good system in place. That's right. So that is very important. That's right. Well, my, my theory is that they should do what makes the water come out of the well. They make a good pizza or a good, good restaurant. That's what they should be doing. I don't want them to be accountants. Donald Trump isn't an accountant. Donald Trump isn't a lawyer. He hires them, and he has the best that there is. And that's what we've been doing for well over 30 years throughout the state. I've got clients in Cushnet, Lenox, Mass, down the Cape, all mm. over the state. Mm -hmm. And it works very well. Yeah. The concept is a part-time bookkeeping service in my office that we run for them, and we keep the fees reasonable. So yeah. get them out of the accounting business. Let them, let them concentrate on what they want to do. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we really could identify when the businesses were going to open? I think that's one of the challenges that the chamber constantly faces. Sure. Um, and again, you know, we want them to have their marketing and their their logo design and things like that in place, also. So, would you ever say to somebody? You know, well, don't bother doing this. This is a crazy idea. Or I, I would sometimes analyze it. I've I've run into situations where I'm thinking, how how, how did they yeah. get into this? Yeah. How could you possibly make any money at this type of thing? And it just suggests to me that they didn't run any numbers at all. And it's kind of it's kind of sad because a lot of these people are quitting jobs and they're putting all the money that they've oh, it's that they've life got life. into it yeah. and everything else. Yeah. I mean, they should get some counseling up front. I, 30% of the time, that's the case with my clients. But the other 70, they've already kind of got to a certain point before I get involved, probably. Yeah. It's just the way it is. So they're going to come to you, and they're going to get like a good basis of what, how they should start and how they should handle their money right from the beginning. How they, yeah, and how they should handle their accounting. Right. Because as we, let's go back to that guy who makes a great pizza and a sub. He's still got to do accounting. Yeah, I, well, four, no, he doesn't. He has you. Right. But there's four reasons he needs a set of books. Okay, the obvious seems to be the IRS. We all know that you could have an IRS or a state audit, and yeah, that's true. But what people don't appreciate is that a couple of the other reasons is you want to have a good set of books with counseling, say, from our office, so that you're successful. Now, you say a good set of books. I know that I literally got a book from you every year. Yes, yeah, we yes. do. We train a set of books. Yes, and, and then all I had to do was 
put everything into an envelope and send it to you. Right. Mark Till to this day, I'm clueless. But I can be clueless because I have a good accounting service. But now you do graphic design. Right. And so you don't want the pizza guy doing that either. You know, you, I don't do graphic design. Right. Very simple concept. Right. You don't but do I did accounting. a great website for you. Yes, you did. I did. Yes, you did. David M. Lynch, Inc. As dot just, com. As you're supposed to. <laughs> but so, you know, uh, talk, of, talking ahead. a little bit about this now, say you know, you're going to go into business and, and you really kind of have to set up some sort of tax planning. Could yeah. you kind of talk about that a little bit? Because I think that people, right. when they hear that, it's like a, a visceral reaction they have. They have that, that fear thing going on. And it really isn't because, you know, no. you know what you're doing. Well, you know, when I explain to clients tax planning, it's what do you want to do with the lowest possible tax? It's kind of hard to say it any other way because I'll give an example. If it's a, if it's a young uh, uh, business person, might be trying to buy his first home, might be trying to buy the business buildings in, might be trying to buy the business itself. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, 30 years from then, we might be talking about what's his retirement plan, is he going to put the kids through college? Um, it changes. Mm -hmm. It changes for the same client through all the years. The trick of all of that is to do tax planning to keep his taxes down. And then in the middle of all that, over 30 years, you've got all the tax changes. Hmm. Have you ever seen a presidential campaign they're not talking about how they're going to change the taxes? Every mm -hmm. single time. Every single time. And we have to deal with that. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a big issue with, I think, this election and everything. Every other one. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. But that's, so we do do tax planning. But in order to do tax planning, you need records and you need them current or else you can't do it. Yep. Right. T uh, tactically, what we're trying to do is before they get to the end of their tax year, we want to put moves in place to artificially increase or decrease their income for their tax return for the lowest possible tax. What do you mean artificially? Well, in other words, they can uh, hold back on paying bills so their income's higher. Uh, they, can, uh, they can bill at a certain time. There's different things they can do to accumulate money into that year or to pay bills out of that year. Uh, for instance, a doctor, we make sure they've paid every single expense they possibly got by December 31st. On the other hand, as far as the billing and everything, we, we select a method of accounting so they don't have to pick it up. I had an eye surgeon that used to have five, six, seven hundred thousand owed to him at any every single year. Really? Never paid taxes on it. Well, because Blue Cross Blue Shield and all that type of thing. That well, yeah. But he never paid taxes on it un until such time as he collected it. But we wanted to make sure he could deduct every bill that he possibly incurred. Hmm. So those are all written. He wrote checks for all of them before December thirty first. Oh. But that's what you get to look at, and you get to look at the client. And again, it goes back to what is it trying to trying to accomplish? Right. Right. Okay, so then we have another question that I wanted to, to know is like, why do you need to keep the, the when because I, I interrupted you before and I apologize for that. Okay. So do you, you need those, the set of books, we'll say, and a lot of times now uh, it's QuickBooks and things like that, which is fine, uh, as long as they don't, you know, go to doing their taxes on QuickBooks, but that could be considered also a set of records that they would keep? Or well, you know, as I said, I've been doing this for over 30 years, and a, a, a little hidden secret, it's, it's, not, it's not to knock the accounting community, but the accounting community has a hard time doing a good set of records for a small business because they have a limited budget. They don't get the type of services that the big guy gets who can pay five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a year for his accounting. But unfortunately, it screws up tax planning and it screws up a lot of things we're keeping records for. Mm. We, it's obvious that you need to keep a set of records for the IRS and the state and audits. A uh, small business person is far more likely to be audited than somebody that just works someplace as a kind of a 9 to 5 W-2 type person. Uh, oh sure, because by the very nature of their, their business they're going to be kind of flagged by the IRS. It's not so much flagged, it's just that like if you had if you had a husband and wife and they both work for say Sears Roebuck and they deduct their interest and taxes on their mortgage when they get to the tax, at the end of the tax year. The IRS has copies of all of that. They've got copies of their W-2s. They've got something from the bank on what the interest and the taxes were. Uh -huh. So what's the audit? But you get into a small business, they're looking for hidden receipts, hidden payroll, can't oh, substantiate yeah. their expenses. Right. So, you know, it gets more involved. So they are more, much more likely to be audited. But what people, and a lot of people think of the records just for that reason. But, I mean, we want to keep a good set of records so that you stay in business and you're successful. You've got 80% of new businesses right, fail. Right. And the other thing that people forget about is once you go in business for yourself, if you want to go buy a sofa and you've got to go to the bank for a loan, they're like, okay, so what's the profit and loss on your business? 
So mm. you need records all the time. Before, you used to show them the W-2 for where you work. Right. Now it's not that way. Right. And the other one that no one remembers, but it's very important, is what if the day comes you want to sell a business? Right. You better have a good set of records because that do. potential buyer is going to be looking for it. Right, right. You don't, you, we have to have all that stuff lined up for it. Well, that, then how long are you supposed to keep those records for? Uh, at least three years from the time of the, of the due date of the return. For instance, if you had this year here, if your return is due by April 15th of 2012, mm -hmm. then you have to keep those records for your 2011 year for at least three years. Besides that, if you bought assets, you should keep the file on the asset. You can keep a separate file on it until you finally dispose of it. So, but clients will call me and ask me on that. Most of them, they keep it. I, I tell them to keep their bank statements. Yeah, I yeah, mean, and why not? Yeah, it's, it's not it's, that it's much. It's a shoebox to keep uh, years of them. Right you know? now, I know that you're an accountant and you're also a tax attorney and you also do bookkeeping. That's a really unusual combination of, uh, like I said, the trio of services. What happened was, uh, as I said earlier, I, I used to work for U.S. Gypsum, and when I did, I went to law school nights. After I got to law school, I went with one of the big eight public accounting firms, purely in the tax department. And so that's all we did was tax planning. I didn't do audits. There was a, a separate division for that. So after a couple of years with uh, one of the big eight, which was like four years at Harvard, I went out, <laughs> I stumbled across a mm. public accountant who explained this whole thing to me. I said, wow, that's amazing. And the first thing I did was go back and talk to all the uh, uh, CPAs and accountants at Arthur Anderson, and they were sending me work galore because the little guy has such a difficult yeah. time. You mentioned QuickBooks earlier, and, and not there's always been something mechanical around. It used to be the dome book. There's what they call one right things where you write the I check I remember through. the one right bookkeeping yeah, system. They, yeah. they call them... Uh, McBee, We're safeguard. dating ourselves a little bit well, there, I Dave. Think I'll bet they're still out there. <laughs> and now, like, there's QuickBooks. <laughs> but, like, when I'm conducting an audit, I say to the agent, I says, does it interest you if the person kind of does their own books? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is that?